Hello again, friends, and welcome to another gaming demonstration. Today, I'm going to cover Bomb Squad Academy. This is a clever puzzle game in which you make creative use of logic gates in order to defuse bombs. As the text at the bottom of the screen says, the Bomb Squad Academy is not a real university. It is, however, a game made by Systemic Games. The principles of electronics taught in the game are a gross oversimplification of the way actual electronics work. If you have a double E background, please don't overthink things. Thank you for playing our game, really. Now, this is a fun game, but let's face it, it's about defusing bombs. So I'm going to make a few changes in order to make mistakes a little less traumatic. First of all, in options, I've turned on long timers because I want additional time to explain to you what I'm doing and why. I also have visualizing currents turned on, again, for the same reason. I want to be able to illustrate to all of you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in order to defuse the bomb. The background music is on because it adds a little something, but I had the volume turned down. The music is very interesting. Everything is from the YouTube library, and there are a lot of nice tracks from Kevin McLeod, one of my favorite musicians. The timer sound effects and the explosion sound effects have been turned off because, well, they're just annoying. If I fail, we'll see a white flash, but I suppose if you want to imagine either it's a flower bomb and you just get a face full of flour, or maybe the bomb is just connected to a cream pie launcher and we're just getting splatted. Imagine it how you will. So let's go and get started here. I'm going to activate level select. I've gone through the entire game but I'm going to start with the basics. Welcome to the Academy. Let's jump right in and review the basics of electronics. Electrical current flows from circuit to circuit like water. Batteries are current sources. They will always supply current to connected components. Switches can control the flow of current. This switch is preventing the current from reaching the buzzer. Try flipping the switch. Great, the current now flows to the buzzer as you can painfully hear. LEDs are small lights that turn on when current flows through them. They can help you quickly see the state of a connection. See if you can turn all the LEDs on. Okay, so turn this one on, turn this one on, turn this one on. Great, you're getting the hang of this. Oh my god, what is this? It looks dangerous. This box is some kind of detonation controller. You have to disarm it before the timer runs out. Don't worry though, there's plenty of time on the clock for us to go over how it works. Look, this device has four pins. One power pin, one detonate pin, and two disarm pins. Be careful. This detonation pin will trigger the bomb immediately. To disarm it, you need to activate pin A and pin B. You could also cut the power all together, but that's not possible in this case. Because the power pin is connected directly to the battery. Go ahead, try to disarm the bomb. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is fix it so that the detonate pin isn't triggered. And the way to do that is to make sure that no power gets to it, which means we can turn off this switch. So that keeps it from prematurely detonating. But we still have the matter of the clock, which will detonate the bomb in just under 24 minutes. No problem, we'll get this done in a matter of seconds. I can turn on switch 2. This switch being off keeps the detonator from going off. I can activate switch 3 and activate disarm side B. Now I want to di activate disarm side A, so I'll just flip the switch. Fantastic. You didn't fall in the trap. We all get to live. Well, thank you. All right, this is our first real test. Good luck. Yeah, this is one of Kevin McLeod's uh, pieces of music. I've used this in other videos before. All right, so the first thing I have to do is make sure we don't prematurely detonate the bomb. So let's trace this back. 
this pathway runs through here and this is turned off but we have a problem this switch would also enable us to activate disarm C which we need to disarm the bomb so we automatically have a problem because I can't keep the detonator from going off prematurely without denying us the ability to activate disarm C however let's take a closer look at something let's take a look at switch D switch D is actively supplying power all the way to the controller itself if we cut power to the controller it won't be able to detonate because it will be electrically dead so in this case we can just cut power like so. Congratulations, you have defused your first bomb. Get ready for your second challenge. Good luck. All right, so as usual, first thing I wanna do is come up with a way to not trigger the detonate pin. So let's trace it back. We have this switch, we can turn that off. Now if I turn this switch on, current will flow through here and through this switch when I turn it on to activate Disarm C. So I'll do that now. Now, Disarm B goes to this switch, there's current here, no problem. Disarm A goes through this switch and then this switch so we can just turn this on and then turn this on. Well done, you flipped all the right switches. That was great, now try this one. Now this one's a little more complicated, at least visually. Okay, so here's the detonate. Let's turn that off. And there's only one way to get to the detonate. There are no branching pathways that plays in our favor. Let's follow C. C goes through here, goes to switch 5. Let's turn that on. And then to switch 2. Now, there's a branch point here. Where does this go? This goes to the detonator. But again, this switch is turned off. So even if power goes through here, we'll still be okay. And then switch 1. Here's power. Okay, so that's disarm C. Disarm B goes here to switch 4. It's got power behind it, so there we go. Disarm A goes through switch 6 and then through switch 3. There we go. So I'm a hero today. Hooray! Let's go on to the next level. Sometimes you'll see boards with wires. Wires work just like traces, they allow the current to flow from one component to another. However, small wires like these can be cut. Go ahead, turn all four LEDs off. Okay, so we can just cut this wire here, and here, and here, and here. Excellent, but remember, just because you can cut a wire doesn't mean you always should, because you can't uncut a wire. That makes sense, and that will come into play in future levels. We'll start things off slowly. See if you can defuse this bomb. Okay. As before, trace the detonator. Okay, so it goes to this wire, which goes to this pathway. Now we need this pathway in order, in order to trigger disarm B, but we can cut the wire to keep the current from flowing to this point. So let's do that now. Now if I turn on switch 2, all that will happen is power will flow through to disarm B and we can do that now. Disarm A goes to switch 1. I can flip that and simply disarm the bomb. Excellent, you did things in the correct order. How about this mess of wire? Okay. And once again, stop the detonator first. So this goes to 
here and there's nothing else that relies on this in order to uh, disarm the bomb so we can safely cut this wire without any negative consequences like so now if I turn on this switch the current is blocked by these two switches this is why cutting that other wire was necessary because if I had not cut that wire the current would have, would have flowed through hit the detonator and boom if we trace this through switch 3 we go through here to a wire that goes to disarm A I'm sorry disarm B switch 3 goes through here to this wire which then flows to disarm A so here we go good job Okay, one more circuit with a lot of wires. Be careful. Okay, so as usual, how do we stop the detonator? So we trace through here, through the serpentine, up over to here, which is connected to this green wire, which goes over to here. Okay and this pathway generally powers other connections that we'll need in order to disarm the bomb so and there's no other dependencies that i can see so i'm going to cut this wire okay if we activate switch one we'll go through this red wire straight to a that's done now let's trace b backward we go to this yellow wire, which goes to switch 2, which, is at, which has current behind it, so there we go. Now let's look at C. C goes through here, through this serpentine, to this orange wire. This orange wire goes here, up through this serpentine, to this light green wire, which goes to this point. Here's a dead end. But in the other direction, we go through this serpentine and go to switch 3. Hey look, there's current behind it, so let's do it now. Congratulations, you've just finished the first section of the game. Well, that's excellent. So I'm going to say that this is a good first place to stop. This gives us a good idea of what the game is like, but I'll probably come back later and do additional levels to demonstrate the finer points of this game. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.